Cavs on the Break NBA podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network, is brought to you by a presenting sponsor, Aligned Health Center. Aligned Health Center is the first chiropractic biophysics clinic in northern Ohio. The team at Aligned Health Center, they're just the best. They help patients with back pain, neck pain, migraines, ADHD, digestive issues, sleep disturbance, whiplash, scoliosis, and much more. And along with chiropractic biophysics, Aligned Health Center is also the leading clinic in regenerative medicine. You may have heard of it as stem cell injections. And listen, you don't have to be an NBA player to get this done or have this treatment or to get checked out. If you have low back pain, shoulder pain, knee pain, arthritis, check out the Regenerative Medicine Clinic at Aligned Health Center. Come in for a free consultation, get some imaging done and x-rays to see how Aligned Health Center can help you. There are no multiple shots and it's complete with physical therapy built into the process so there's no downtime. And look, this gets even better. Aligned Health Center doesn't charge people for x-rays or exams. They don't, they just don't. They don't bill you later either. They let you know right up front, right away, how much it's going to cost, and they're transparent about the process. They are number one for a reason. So call Aligned Health Center today. What's it going to hurt? 440-385-7357 or visit their website at alignedhealthcenters.com to make an appointment. And also to learn more about how Aligned Health Center can help you. Again, that's alignedhealthcenters.com. Give them a call at 440-385-7357. Iguodala to Curry, back to Iguodala, up for the layup, oh, blocked by James! It's over, it's over! Cleveland is a city of champions once again! The Cavaliers are NBA champions! That sound means it's time for Cavs with the Break NBA Podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. I'm your host, Chase Smith, and with me, he's the editor and writer at 48minutes.com, the assistant editor at outkick.com. He's our Cavs insider, national NBA writer, Sam Amico. Sam, week 18 is in the books. We're in week 19, and it isn't hasn't started pretty. No. Um, rough start for our Cavs, baby. Yeah, well, it's been a rough few weeks. So. It's been a rough few years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, can, I you will get no argument from me. Well, uh, also joining us today, Sam, and this is just a treat, Chris Kraus, the editor, co-owner, tweet master at 48minutes.com. This is a 48-minute takeover, guys. Chris, welcome to the Cavs of the Break NBA podcast. Oh, Chase, thanks for having me. Hey, I have a timer here. We're trying to go 48 minutes <laughs> since we have 48 oh, minutes. I like that, yeah. Uh, takeover here. <laughs> we got the entire 48-minute crew here on Cavs on the Break. And, and we, we, we have to start, Sam and Chris, we have to start talking about Kevin Love. Sam, for those of the Cavs fans who have not been online, living under a rock, or haven't really followed the team because they're so awful, why is Kevin Love trending in the past <laughs> couple of days? Just give us a brief recap of what is going on in, in, with Kevin Love and the Cavs. Well, when the, you know, I mean, the quick recap is when the ref threw him the ball under the basket against the Raptors. We're down three. Uh, sorry, like the Cavs fought back down three against the Raptors. Okay, so yeah, I'm just going to throw he, that out there. Yeah, well, right. And then um, he was upset. You know, there was a very clear shove in his back. I'm not excusing what he did, but he was angry, obviously. Um, and, and just to end the speculation that he's angry about anything that was going on with the team, it was the officiating. But his reaction to that hurt the team more than a technical foul because nobody knew at the time what he was doing, like why he was angry. He, he slapped the ball in bounds right to the Raptors, walked away, started saying something to the ref. He just lost it. He, he, yeah. he, he lost his cool, you know, uh, and, and we've all done it, but fortunately, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm not popular enough to go viral when I lose my cool. And, and I also tr- try to do it where there aren't cameras around. So, but I mean, you know, at the time, it just seemed like, you know, that's the type of thing that's going to go viral. It's a, and we saw JB Bicker staff and the coaching staff all kind of freak out, like yelling at him, like, what are you doing? Um, he didn't take it. You know, there was no time out there. There was no, he would have been better off taking a technical because at least people would know that he was mad at the refs at the time. So it was, it was, I, I'll tell you what, I've been covering, uh, the NBA really full time now for 14 years. And I've never seen anything like that play. Chris, Kevin Love is an easy target. 
He hasn't played a lot. He had a big contract. And from the just come back, start playing, not really what you want to see out of your veterans on your team, Chris. Yeah, I thought this stretch was going to be sort of like a Chris Paul experiment with, with Oklahoma mm-hmm. City, like like a much shorter sample size of that. Um, yeah, just I, I, I'm guessing it hasn't been that. I'm curious to see how many of the remaining 11 games that he plays um, and what, you know, what's going forward. I'm, I know, I know, Sam, you're much more in tune to, to, to what will happen. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, from an outsider's view, it's it's a uh, it's, it's got other people's attention. Yeah, you know, I, I would say that it's a big question mark. I, I, I couldn't tell you what they're going to do. It sounds like right now a fine. I don't know if there's going to be a suspension or any of that. They they keep saying they're going to turn the page. So I'm I'm guessing that's what they'll do. You know, we're seeing tweets that, well, hey, they had a couple, you know, mishaps with KPJ and he's traded. Dre Drummond, Andre Drummond was a little upset about his minutes. He was benched and then bought out. But Kevin Love is just doing this and it's all gravy. Sam, is it because he has this get out of jail free card because he won a ring and he has earned this with the team? It doesn't seem like he's earned it with the fans. Very unpopular right now, uh, pretty much across the board in all of Cavs Nation. Well, those, those other guys were easy to trade. (laughs) you know, or, or let go, you know, with him, with his contract, you can't, you're, you're kind of, and I hate to use the word stuck, but that's the way it's kind of playing out right now. He's, he's been injured uh, a lot. He's not been, you know, those injuries have obviously caught up with him. He's averaging career lows and points and rebounds. And I think it's 11 points and, and seven rebounds right in that area since he's come back in the 18 games that he's played. He's got a massive contract. Um, so but he made a nice outlet pass a couple weeks ago. Yeah, well, I, I know when I saw that, I just was like, who cares? <laughs> I mean, outlet passes. Who cares? <laughs> I mean, I know it was a nice pass, and it's but to me, it's just like, come on, outlet passes. That's what we're built, you know, that's what we're hanging our hat on these days. But I I I did, you know, and I mentioned that in my column uh, after I said you know, look what the, Kevin Porter Jr. was. We still don't really know why they sat him out two weeks. Um, and, and Drummond, you know, that situation, we kind I kind of got why, you know, that situation didn't work when they traded for Jared Allen. He, he was getting upset over his minutes. So I, I don't think benching him, we've been over this before. I don't think benching Drummond was, was a smart move by any stretch, but um, and, and certainly trading KPJ to me was, I, I, I just don't get that because, you know, he's exactly what they could use right now. But um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. You know, to me, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem right that, that Kevin would only face a fine or a talking to when historically they've, they've, you know, really brought the hammer down on the, uh, on these other guys. And not to beat a dead horse, but the lineup that has the best plus minus for the Cavs this year, we've seen it once. Kevin Love, Andre Drummond, Colin Sexton, Darius Garland, and my boy Okoro. Um, Chris, what are what do the Cavs have to do? They can't allow this. I mean, they said the official statement is they're taking care of it internally, right? Mm-hmm. But what I mean, are, are we just going to move on and forget this happened? I mean, is what, what what's the end game here? I mean, you can't really do too much to the end of the season. I mean, if he's it, – it would be crazy to buy him out with this many years left. But, you know, I mean, Blake Griffin with two years left was just bought out in the middle of the season. You know, maybe next year is when when buyout talks could happen just based on history of the league and where, where they are in big contracts like that. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, maybe he gets a calf, in, calf injury and, uh, you know, he's, mm, you know, he just, he's out for another stretch and it's over, you know. Yeah, I, I just – I don't think you can have, I think he's become pretty toxic. I mean, obviously I don't know anything about the locker room, but I'm just basing us all off of what we see on the court. I don't want a Coro Garland. I, I don't want that young, you know, I'd rather them take off Nance and, and even Chetty who, you know, doesn't give you any problems when he's out there. At least he's trying to play hard. And, um, you know, Kevin Love has been pretty vocal about his, um, you know, struggles with mental health. And I can't imagine how difficult that is handling the pressures and 
um, you know, being in front of thousands and thousands and millions of people uh, with your career. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's just a very, very complicated situation that just a really, really bad look for, for the Cavs, for, for Kevin Love. And, you know, Sam, it was just a couple of weeks ago we were talking about maybe a 10 seed and in what hope kind of Kevin Love brought as he's coming back from, from this injury um, post all-star break. And this is almost the worst that could have gone because not only is he providing career low numbers, but he's taking minutes away from people who could be playing and maybe doing better, Sam. This is the worst that could have happened. Yeah, well, I think he's played 18 games. I don't know what they I, – I know they've lost 13 of 17. So, you know, he hasn't really helped them, obviously, win. Um, and they've had countless injuries to other guys, too, in fairness to, to him. But to me, it's just been um, – <laughs> it, 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 it's it's like you said it's been the worst case scenario with him coming back um taking minutes away from they they frankly they played a lot better when larry Nance jr was healthy and starting at yep. that power forward yep yep well uh chris sam let me give you a couple dates here that i think um we need to put in our calendars june 22nd and july 29th you want to know why those dates are important I'm guessing one of them's the lottery. June 22nd is the lottery, and July 29th is the draft. Guys, <laughs> it is time to start kind of clearing our calendars, putting that in there, and saying, hey, you know, this is going to be an important day for the Cleveland Cavaliers again. Um, the Cavs are 21 and 40. They're the 13th seed in the East, um, six games out of the 10th seed, the play in game that we've talked about. There's no way that's going to happen. They were two and eight the last 10, a three game losing streak. And it is time to start talking about the lottery and about the draft and what that looks like. There's no way that we're going to make the play in game. Um, and even if there was a, a whatever percentage chance, um, I think our loss to the wizards uh, pretty much did us in on Sunday. Uh, and we lost to the Raptors on uh, yesterday, Monday as well. So those are all teams that are ranked above us have better records than us fighting for that 10th spot. And there's no way that's going to happen. Chris, the Cavs are in the lottery once again. Is is like, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting, uh, like the same result. Like, how do we get out of this cycle? I mean, it could be worse. I mean, like you know, you like you look at teams like the Kings and you know teams that have like been the lottery. What like the Kings is like a dozen straight seasons and. Uh, I mean, you, you guys have titles. You got the draft coming up this weekend. I think there's a lot for Clevelanders to be. Uh, <laughs> Chris was like, talking uh, about the crowd. About, I mean. talking about that. Like, it could be worse. They could not have a good football team. Well, news flash, uh, this, this is the first time you've had a good football team the, in for, for the Cavs decades. season. But, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's still, it's, it, there, there is some positives here, I think, compared to other franchises. It, it could be a lot worse. Yeah, we, that Sam, that we, should be the Cavs' motto next season. <laughs> Instead of be the fight, it should be we're not the kings. <laughs> oh man! Well, we have a couple good pieces. We have Darius Garland. We have Isaac Okoro. We also have Colin Sexton. Uh, we 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 have seen flashes of good basketball. Sam, yeah. How is this organization going to continue to tell the fans that like we're on the right track when obviously their record in play speaks for itself? Well. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, first of all, in the history of the franchise, they've won four playoff series when LeBron James isn't on the team. That's 50 years of basketball, four playoff series wins. That's a um, brilliant nugget, Sam. Yeah, uh, that well, is. I hate to pass it along, but that's the truth. And then and then. So wait, so let me just repeat that, because that is amazing. I've, I've never heard that before. So in the 50 plus years of the Cleveland Cavaliers basketball organization right they've only won four playoff series without lebron james and all of their entire well right in 92 they won two series in one year to, to go to the eastern conference and finals a jordan shot jordan shot was 89 they didn't win any series okay. that year even oh, that's though right, they that's, had, right, that's right that's right yeah even though they had finished with the best record in the history of the franchise that's right uh, that year that was right um and then uh, they they obviously won in '76, which is uh, the miracle of Richfield season. Fascinating. Um, oh, that's and, awful. And they, have, 
and they Chris. and then they won they won one in ninety three, um, and then lost to the Bulls in the second round. And they haven't. I think I'm I'm pretty sure. In fact, I'm almost positive every year. And I didn't look this up, but every year that LeBron's not on the team since he's been drafted, in the lottery. they've played the lottery and right. gotten a you know top top five pick. So. Um, True. Yeah, you don't you don't want to become the Sacramento Kings. Now, that said, I, I'm I'm in agreement with Chris in that you do have to me, you know, four players that you're intending to build the team around in in uh, Sexton, Garland, uh, Okoro, and I, I shouldn't Jared say you're intending, but they're they're the core and Jared Allen. And yeah. then I think I didn't mention that in my answer. list earlier. He's in the list. Larry Nance Jr. is in there too. Yeah, I mean he's not as young as those guys, but he's still young. Um, so, but I think you still need, even with those guys and seeing their ceilings or projecting their ceilings, I guess you should say, you're still going to need, you know, that elite kind of guy who is, if not a super duper star, is pretty close to one. Um, and, and, you know, maybe you find that in this draft. I don't know, but I, I, I think that you're still seeking that player to kind of be that, if not definite number one, then a one, a, you know, or, or a guy who's real dynamic. So uh, I think there are some things that, that are positive about it, but you can't keep saying every year, you know, you're going to, we're still in a growth period, you know, um, it takes time. You can't, you know, nobody wants to wait till they're 82 years old to, to see the team be good again. Um, you look at like the Atlanta Hawks, look at the huge step they've taken because they've, and, and it's yep. plain and simple. They've added veteran players. They've added Bogdanovich. They've added Gallinari. They, they added Rondo, got Lou Williams, um, you know, and, and the Cavs don't really have that. The, the kind of Kevin Love's supposed to be that well, guy. I think Nance fits that role now, too. Like, I, I would put Nance Larry does Nance fit that role, mm-hmm. but you, you also, I, I think you need like two or three more as well if and, you're going to start being like, hey, we want to make, the yeah, I think Tarion Prince could do that. Uh, Chris, I, I want to uh, ask you this question because Sam, a couple. Uh, episodes ago, we talked about, man, are the Cavs going to start coming out with like phantom injuries? Like, are they really going to like, just like be obvious the going towards the draft. I, I found this tweet from a guy named Evan Damarell. Shouts to Evan, a uh, Twitter account. Am not Evan, a contributor for Forbes Sports. This is what he says. This is who's out for the Cavs next game against the Magic. Colin Sexton, Isaiah Hartenstein, Larry Nance Jr., Tarion Prince, Dylan Windler, Lamar Stevens, and Matthew Della Vadova are out for the Cavs against the Orlando Magic. It's gonna be rough, I guess. Um, ha- have the Cavs gotten any toe injuries? Because I- I'm seeing I'm seeing more toe injuries around the league than I've ever seen, and I and, and that's one I can relate with. I mean, like I- I'm like I could play with that, but I guess you know because we're in a shortened season and everything like that, and also you know teams at the end of the season. I don't want to call them tanking teams, you know, because I guess we're not calling them tanking teams anymore or whatever. You know, pushing towards the bottom of the lottery. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, it's gonna be, I guess. Uh, it's going to be interesting to watch. It's for the basketball purists. But uh, as someone who lived in Philadelphia, went through the process and went through, uh, you know, a roster full of, of glorified G League players, um, it, it can be good. You can find your Robert Covington's, your TJ McConnell's. You can you can find your guys at the end of the season. And uh, maybe, maybe you know, maybe the Cavs will get somebody like that. The Magic are 18 and 43. Uh, they're the second worst record in the NBA. The Cavs are just uh, three games uh, ahead of them. Um, Sam, I, I just think the Cavs are just all in on the line. Like, that's an incredible list of just not. Yeah. Awesome I, players I would say that most of those with. guys are legitimately hurt. Um, I certainly, I certainly think, you know, with, with the concussion things, those are issues. The, the thing is chase, they're not winning anyway. So I don't yeah. think they really need to pull guys to make sure they lose. It's not like, like like the Chris Grant era Cavs before LeBron came back, they were pooling guys and coming up with a lot of phantom injuries. I mean, I, I remember one time Chris Grant was like, oh, no, when they won on a last second shot, you know, toward the end of the year. So uh, it, 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 it's that was a good Chris uh, Grant. That was a good Chris Grant. 
Yeah. He, he I, thought, I, I thought he was on the podcast for a moment. I had to like <laughs> shake my head and be like, well, no, that, Chris isn't here at Sam. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I had a good, strong relationship with Chris. I was sad to see him go. Um, but uh, at any rate, he, uh, that, that I don't think these, I don't think Kobe Altman's there. I don't think that he's saying let's pull guys out to, to try to lose because the lottery is so different now anyway, yeah. that you're not really rewarded for finishing with the worst second third worst record you can fall all the way down to you know quickly the odds are, the odds are stacked now so that it's almost even steven with the top eight teams so yeah you know or the worst eight teams i guess i should say so it doesn't really benefit you to to finish with the worst record or the second worst record or try to quote unquote tank so we have two more games in slate at week 19 the slate of games uh Wednesday, the day or list today, tonight we play at the rock. We have two home games against the magic at seven. And then Friday, April 30th, we host the wizards at the rock at seven 30. Um, I don't see us winning either of those games. I'm just super down on the calves. Um, and I can tell on your voice and your look, dude. Yeah. I, I, I hate a lack of effort. I hate immaturity. I, I, I I'm not a fan of veteran players. Just, I think that speaks volumes and if it's evident on the court, then it's going to be evident at the locker room at practice. It's going to be evident in the film. Like it's just, if it's that it's, easily it's human nature, it's human nature to you realize that it's another losing season. So you're kind of, you know, and I'm not saying the guys are doing this, but I could tell you, and I think everybody would agree that it's human nature, no matter what you're doing, when you know the end is near at your job and you're going to, or at school or whatever, and summer breaks coming, you're kind of going through the motions, you know, and, and that's probably where they are right now. Unfortunately, protect Isaac Okoro at all costs. That's all I'm saying. I just don't want any bad habits. I just, I I think it could be special. We're going to take a quick break and come back. Chris Krause had a great idea to talk about which Cavs team was better, the 2007 finals team or the 2015 finals team without Kevin Love and Kyrie. Stick with us. We're going to talk about them and get back. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Books like Stephen King's The Shining or Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. If you're on the hunt for book recommendations and enjoy sparkling conversation, come read along with us and then listen in. It's not a rumor. It's the truth. Ray Guy and Rotor are back together again with the r r podcast on the Press Play Podcast Network. We're going to talk Browns. We're going to talk Cavs, Indians, even if they're not playing well, which might happen. We're going to talk monsters. We're going to talk college football. You name it. When it comes to sports, Ray Guy and Rhoda, we're going to break it down for you as only we can. So make sure you join us right here on the Press Play Podcast Network. Want to hear more about your favorite TV shows and movies that are on countless streaming services? Then listen to Up Next with your new favorite hosts, me, Kristen Aviles. And me, Christina Walter. Every other week, we'll highlight one genre, but two movies or TV shows, one old and one new. We'll let you know what's hot and what's not from your favorite or least favorite streaming services. And be sure to stay tuned to the end of each episode where we shout out an artist whose name you should know for their talent in the industry. So follow us to stay up to date with your favorite hosts from Up Next, a part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Hi, my name is Jeremy Powell, co-host of the Orange is Orange or Browns podcast. Check us out anywhere you listen to podcasts. For all your Browns coverage, post-game, pre-game, anything you need, Browns, you'll find it here on the Orange is Orange or Browns podcast. Hi, my name is Sam Post, owner of Phenomwell CBD Store and PhenomwellCBD.com. That's like phenomenal, PhenomwellCBD.com. Tune in where we talk with experts about how the amazing hemp plant can make a difference for people's health and well-being from the Press Play Podcast Network. Hey, it's Tito, host of the Premier Fantasy Podcast. Get all the news and analysis you need to dominate your fantasy league. I've been doing this as long as anybody in the business. I can help give you the edge in your leagues. It's the Premier Fantasy Podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. For the Dennis Maniloff Show, I'll tap into my 40-plus years of following Cleveland sports and 30-plus years of writing and talking about them. 
so as to bring you informed opinions and analysis of your favorite players and teams. I also will monitor the national sports scene and when warranted, step out of the toy department and into the real world. And I'll always be on the lookout for special guests. By all means, join us. Hey, it's JD from the Hyman Podcast. I created this podcast to have hard conversations. Conversations that make us human, but are also wildly uncomfortable. Conversations that help give voice to the voiceless and to the marginalized. Now you can listen to the entire first season on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Consider this your personal invitation to join the conversation. All right, we are back. Cavs on the break NBA podcast from the Press Play Podcast Network. Sam Amico, Chris Krauss. It's a 48-minute takeover. Guys, and we have, let me pull this up. We have about uh, 29 minutes to talk about <laughs> which Cavs team was better. The 2007 Cavs teams that lost in the finals against the Spurs, they got swept in the shortened season uh, strike. Uh, or the 2015 Cavs dismembered team with uh, Kevin Love with a torn shoulder. Thank you, Kelly, Kelly Olenek. And um, Kyrie's knee fell apart game one against the. Uh, the, the Warriors, um, Chris, what about this debate just like keeps you up at night? Like, I know you're so tossing and turning, thinking I'll, I'll about give you a little this. Background We're going to settle it tonight. We're going to settle it tonight. Yeah, so I'm, I'm debating with a friend. Um, he's basically very pro Kyrie Irving and said basically Kyrie won that series in 2016, um, you know, because LeBron couldn't do it without him, you know, the year okay. before. And I was just like, okay, let's, let's just calm down on that. Um, but he, but he was like, look at the team. Look, you know, you got Della Dova playing, you know, you got even Shumper. And I'm like, well, it's still a pretty good team. Uh, but we went back, we were, we were going through the numbers of the 2007 team. And I think that that team's a little bit better than um, it gets like credit for. It's like, Oh, lo like LeBron is pulling G leaguers to the, to the league. I mean, Agalskis, um, I, I was a bit surprised just going back and looking and kind of re-remembering how, how well he played and, and really drew good in there. Um, but I mean, I, I do think it is the 2015 teams without Kyrie and without, um, without, without Kevin Love, even, even though they lost in that, um, in, in that series to the, the Warriors and didn't lose as badly, I guess. Um, but I mean, I think that, I mean, both teams are not great, right. Without the two, without the two stars. I mean, that, that was, um, that was LeBron's first year back, basically putting everything back together. Yeah. Well, so I. I think we like our sample size needs to be those uh, five games of the finals for that 15 team and the finals for, for the 2007 team. I think to make it fair, if you think if you do the whole season, uh, I don't know if it really, there is an argument, no matter how good Drew Gooden played or if Z was in his prime, like no, that doesn't, I, I don't think a healthy LeBron and healthy Kyrie can almost beat anybody. Sam, you're quiet and looking like you're like thinking. Well, deep in thought. what I'm, I'm trying to think of is uh, let, let me go through the starters and you guys tell me, stop me if I'm wrong. In 2007, so you'd center, you'd have Zadrunas Ogowskis versus Timothy Mozgov. Is that right? Mm. Uh, okay. Tristan Thompson, I thought. Oh, Tr well, oh Tristan Mo was. Tristan was playing power forward, I'm pretty sure. Well, can I start him at center? No, you have to do it right. <laughs> well, I want to start him at center. <laughs> Why can't we go LeBron, Tristan, uh, Shumpert, Smith, and and Delhi? Why can't we do that lineup? Was that the starting lineup? You have to go with the starting line. We'll do benches too. Uh, you have fine. to do the real stuff. Yeah. I don't know that that's better than because because Mozgov was like all right, you know, like there was I think there's yeah. a reason why he was starting. Um, <laughs> and it was I mean it, they, well they wanted to play a slower pace, I guess as well. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. We'll we'll play by your rules, Sam. It's okay, a forty-eight so, minute takeover. Whatever you guys want. <laughs> so Z versus Mozgov, I would have to go with Z in two thousand seven. Facts. Uh, um, and then if you look at power forward, was Drew Gooden and Tristan Thompson right? So I would. I mean, I would give. Boy, they both had their good qualities, but I would probably give the edge to to Trist Gooden. Definitely, I shouldn't say definitely, but pretty much better offensive player um, was just very up and down and, and Tristan definitely better defensively. I would probably give the edge to Tristan. Mm -hmm. um, I would from, agree. So, so it's, you know, and then the backcourts, 
I, I'm pretty sure the Cavs backcourt was was a starting backcourt Pavlovich and Larry Hughes. That sounds or was right. it Eric Snow or was Eric, Eric Snow Snow's not on a starting that? point guard? So who else started? Pavlovich came off the bench. Um, Larry Hughes start. Booby started a couple games. Um, uh, no, Eric Eric Snow didn't start a start though. I think it was Daniel Gibson. Yeah, uh, Pavlovic and um, Larry. Larry got two starts out of the four. Oh, Larry, Larry and Daniel Gibson each each got two. Okay, we're talking about the finals. Yeah, yeah, against the Spurs. Uh, so, so I I always thought like Eric Snow was the guy. Um, but like I don't know what what happened. I don't know. Maybe they just like ran. Can't keep up with Tony Parker. Back. Tony Parker ran circles around him. <laughs> could have been, yeah, that could have like, been why they're just like super we slow. Things. Um, and there were a couple of series where Booby had like he was he caught fire a little bit in like the early part of the playoffs and yeah, and just went Detroit, ice cold. He had this huge game. Um, I'm gonna go. With, I, I know Delhi had a great series, or at least a great first two games. I, I'm sorry, I think Booby's a better player. Was. Although once he once his contract with the Cavs was up, he was out of the league. I mean, he hasn't returned. Um, Chase is giving me a look. All right, so and then and then Larry Hughes versus who who was starting for the Cavs? J.R. Smith or Shumpert? J.R. Smith, right? Yeah. Hey, watch our Lord and Savior J.R. Smith watches over me in my studio. You got you got to watch <laughs> out now. Hey, so we'll, let, let, let's 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 ask this question. Which team was better, the f- 15 Warriors or the seven Spurs? The seven Spurs. I, I know they're different styles. <laughs> they're th- they're different the, styles of basketball. I think the 16 Warriors were uh, – the, the 15 Warriors probably weren't as good as the seven, oh, seven Spurs. Everybody kind of picked the 2007 Spurs to win the finals, to be the team to beat going into the season. I don't think people were saying that about that Warriors team. That Warriors team really kind of rose up. I, I would I would say the Spurs were better. Would the 2015 Cavs have been swept by the seven Spurs, Chris? Let's dissect this all the way. The, we, we know the seven Cavs got, would get swept. That's what happened. Yeah. It wasn't really close at all. It wasn't competitive. Um, I don't think so, but I think it's because of literally just LeBron. I think LeBron was just so much better that he's not going to get swept at that point in his career. And, uh, Which, you know, cause I mean, he, sh- I believe he should have won finals MVP in a loss. Um, yep. I know it's, it, Iggy, it's, it's I can't hard believe, to get um, that. That's I just mean, that's, undefensible. I don't know. I mean, the only defense is, well, they won. Well, LeBron averaged like 40, 13, 12 and eight. Like it was this ridiculous like stat line. Um, you know, so it, 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 ultimately, this conversation does come down to which LeBron is better, mm-hmm. uh, a 2007 green LeBron or a man's man 15 LeBron. Sam, which LeBron would you would you take in a series? Well, I think, the, first of all, let me preface it by saying this. The 2007 LeBron was amazing. True. Just getting that team to the finals. But yep. to me, the two. 2015 i mean just the experience he had won a couple championships he'd been to four straight finals at that point that was his fifth straight finals yeah. um he was just a seasoned player at that point in his career so um i i, I definitely would give 2015 lebron the edge and, and just remembering like back like that piston series like took everything they need everything out of him to beat the entire team so yeah, yeah. i wonder if like that was a little bit of it kind of like running out of gas in the finals. Whereas, yeah. you know, 2015, 2016 and so on with LeBron, like you figure out how to pace yourself through the playoffs and through, you know, even through like, you know, like even just through games, even better now. Yeah. Um, right. And then it was before, but um, yeah, cause I, I remember being shocked that they were, they were swept and I'm sure, I'm you sure that was shocked, the reaction after that. Chris, you know, one that of the they best were swept. Series. I wasn't shocked at all. I never felt like we had a chance against Pop, against Duncan, against Ginobili, against Parker. I felt like so, we're going here's to get a real swept. Question. Here's the real question. Who is a better coach, Mike Brown or David Blatt? David Blatt. You think? Yes. I'm not so sure. I went through this before the podcast. I was sitting around drinking a diet root beer. And just thinking of this stuff. And I thought, 
I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Mike Brown team, that team really defended well. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that I, I had a glimmer of hope in, in 15, seeing how Delhi could get just a, annoy Steph, um, yes. trying to watch these, yes. these warriors, overcome this they, you know they, they finally got past the clippers and they had a miraculous win against you know the thunder like hey can a jump shot shooting team win the finals um tr- seeing the brawn figure it out i feel like that was one of like the f- i feel like miami the brawn is ultra ultra unassailable the best lebron it was a mixture of what we see now with his youth, I think 15 LeBron, you really started to see him figure out the next phase of his game to where he's perfected it now, but it was fun to see him figure that out um, without relying on his like sheer speed. Like you really saw him and he almost did it. There are people say that we should have won that series and the Warriors should have won the 16 series. If Kevin Love and Kyrie doesn't get injured, we might be sell we might you know have won the 15 championship i i i think that they 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 would have had a great shot if if Kyrie and and, and love were totally healthy cuz that first that game one if you remember went to overtime when yep. Kyrie got hurt yep or re-injured and and couldn't play the rest of the series um yeah but mm. but they gave him everything they had in that in that first game and i thought yeah if they they just steal one there um they'll be in good shape but but uh, I, I asked on Twitter, and all the fans are 2015. I mean, to the yeah, to the yeah. T. Everybody, everybody's saying 2015. Um, but not Sam. I don't. Amico. I don't remember the benches that well. I really don't. I remember either Shumpert. Shumpert must have come off the bench, right? In that 20, or was he starting? I can't remember. And then Jr. was. Jr. Uh, was. Yeah, James Jones got 15 minutes per playoff game. Mike Miller, seven minutes, Sean oh, Marion four. I mean, then it was just like Kendrick Perkins. They signed him late is like a <laughs> intimidator or whatever. Um, but yeah, the Brown averaged 42 minutes per game of the playoffs. Jeez. Uh, Tristan 36, um, Shumpert 34, JR 31. Those are a lot of minutes. Uh, yeah. Mozgov well, 26, like- Delhi 24. Um, and then for the six and seven, uh, Oh, my computer just froze. Yeah, because like I think I think that Cavs team had the same problem that LeBron's uh, first Miami team had that they really couldn't fill out like seven through twelve on the roster the same way that like a typical team would. Like, right. you know, you're, sign- you're signing like Mike Miller at 34. You got you know, James Jones at 34. You, got, you know Kendrick Perkins and uh, I don't know. Not- Guys, the Brown averaged 44 minutes in 2006 in the finals. Larry Hughes got 35 minutes, dude. There's no way that team was better than the 15 team. I'm sorry if Larry Hughes is getting 35 minutes. I think I like Larry Hughes. My only my only issue with Larry Hughes was it was very evident there were times he would come down the court. He was playing point sometimes, and he would come down the court. And actually, I think he was playing point, and they had Booby playing shooting guard. Is how that yeah. worked. But but there were times. During the regular season, anyway, you would see Larry Hughes come down the court, and his his thought process was, "Okay, it's my turn to shoot." Yeah, and he, I mean, if it was one on four, he would put up a shot sometimes. But yep. he was a very underrated defender, yeah. um, and 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 a decent athlete, you know. Yeah, I I, I think uh, twenty fifteen was the best LeBron. I think Z is the second best player on those teams. But then I think everyone else, uh, Drew Gooden had thirty points. Um, I mean, not 30 points, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. per game. Yeah, um, Drew Gooden wasn't a bad player. He just, I think he and Tristan were both number four overall picks too. And I'll tell you this, those two guys are the, probably two of my top, if not five, top 10 for sure guys that I've ever covered and dealt with. One time I wrote a story on Drew Gooden, a feature on him, and he came up to me like a week later. I saw him after or before a game and he said, hey, Thanks a lot for that feature. My mom has it posted on her fridge. She printed it <laughs> off and posted on her fridge. And I said, wow, never thought that would an NBA player's mom would be posting stories on the fridge. But I heard he used that as a bargaining chip to get more money, Sam. 
Well, I'd like to see a cut of that <laughs> if it's true. <laughs> no, I don't know. So, all right, Chris, what is your final answer? Which team was better, the 2007 Cavs or the 2015 uh, Kyrie Love? I, I, I really think that LeBron, um, just the difference, you know, that in his game makes every, makes the majority of it. I still think, yeah, I, I, I agree with everything you guys kind of – the conclusion you guys came to as well, basically, is a, it is a better supporting cast. Um, uh, it's, just, it's just a little closer than I thought it was going to be you know, going through yeah. everything. And, um, and I, and I guess, I guess my, my final take is just that, you know, the end of that roster, um, you know, just, you know, when Mike Miller and James Jones playing, you know, in, in the finals and, you know, it's, it's not ideal. <laughs> yeah. Sean Livingston tore us up. That's for sure. Our second unit wasn't. Yeah. Wasn't, wasn't yeah. Iguodala and Livingston were, were killers. I thought that they did a nice job on, as well as they could on, you know, Curry and Clay Thompson and a much younger and more impactful Draymond. Um, But they just had no answer for those other older uh, veteran guys and, and, and Livingston. and and, uh, Chris, what was your answer? Sorry, 2015. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still going with the 2015 um, supporting cast. The one that, yeah, the one that lost uh, to to the first Warriors team. Um, I just think it's, I mean, it like, well, the the job that LeBron did during that finals is like you can argue that that, that might be his best finals. He just hadn't like he couldn't do it by himself, and no, yeah. nobody can against a a team with shooters like the Warriors have, yeah. and you know everything there. Sam, your answer. I think we all know. Yeah, I I agree. Twenty twenty fifteen. Um, and and again, it was it truly was, even though they won the championship the next year, it truly was an inspirational performance, not just from LeBron, but but also from from Della Vadovo and the way he def- was able to defend Curry and um, you know come I think on he Sam stay with the 2007 that. team don't don't fall I will say this me, Chris well 2007 was the first year that I that I covered the NBA on a full time basis and um, I was just happy to be there. I don't know about the Cavs, but I was just happy to be there. I relate because, like you got all this like you know. You get all this cool final stuff, a lot of stuff I still have. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you everything, of course, in the finals isn't run by the Cavs anymore. The Cavs PR is removed pretty much from the equation. And the in terms of, you know, credentialing and, and the kind of stuff you get. I remember getting a 2007 NBA finals book bag from the NBA. Nice. You know, you, you see everybody, everybody who's anybody in the NBA is there. You know, uh, the commissioners there It was just to me, that was that was definitely like for me, it was like, okay, this is my first year covering the NBA full time. And it's so cool that the team in the city that I live in or nearby uh, is in the final. So as far as an actual answer to the question, though, I, I, I do think 2015. Uh, um, but I, I, I'm with Chris. It was, it wasn't, it's not a blowout. It's not an easy thing. I think it's, I think it's pretty close. Cause don't forget 2007 LeBron was a bad dude. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, he was, he was something else. He just didn't have the experience in the seasoning of the 2015 or the championships under his belt. Yep. Very interesting question, Chris. Thanks for bringing it up. But I, I, I would have to say the 2015 Cavs team minus Kyrie and Kevin Love uh, was better than the 2017. They got swept by the Spurs. I don't you know, I, I don't think it's fair to, to say which team was better, Spurs or Warriors. Um, I might say the Spurs were a better team. I think at that time they were. At that, you know, when you compare them to 2015, I wouldn't say they were better than, you know, they, to me, they definitely weren't better than the Warriors teams with Durant. Right. But mm-hmm. the, I yeah. think, that, I mean, those teams, those Spurs teams in the in the early 2000s were, were just powers. I will say I, I felt that hopelessness feeling game three of the like pretty much whenever we didn't win game one and and golden state and and 18 i think the series was over after that game like that was the series and it i was at game three when durant took over in the third quarter and it was it was Was that was that the timeout game the jr timeout yeah it was the well that's i I like to call it the george hill miss free throw game i don't like to slander (laughs) jr smith like that but um (laughs) jr made the play of the game too he got the offensive rebound (laughs) it was uh, so it was the george hill missed free throw game but yes it was the timeout game as well yeah um i felt very hopeless after that that we had a shot i just that that was it 
Well, that does it for this episode of Cavs on the Break NBA podcast. Thank you all so much for downloading and listening. Shouts to our presenting sponsor, Aligned Health Center. Shouts to the Press Play Podcast Network for making this possible. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Cavs on the Break. We always follow back. Follow Sam on Twitter at Amico Hoops. Catch all of his work and writings at 48minutes.com and outkick.com for breaking news. Insider info. Do not miss out. Make sure to follow Chris Krause on Twitter at NBA Krause. He's also at 48minutes.com. 48minutes.com takeover. Check it out. It's great stuff. Make it your homepage. The first thing you open up when you go to the internet, whether you use Chrome, Firefox. Does anyone even use Internet Explorer anymore? I don't think anyone does. They only use it to download. Well, they My mom that, does. My that, mom uses it. Yeah. That checks out. <laughs> checks out. Um, people only use that to download Chrome. But uh, yeah, Sam, any final thoughts, man? No, I'm just curious if we went 48 minutes. We are at 41 minutes, and I think after a couple ad reads and oh, yeah, yeah. play promos, yeah. I think we're going to be golden, baby. Okay, that's well, that's it, you know. And I, I think that you know, as far as the current team goes, um, it'll be interesting to see where, you know, what kind of effort they're giving the rest of the year, because and, and and really what you know what they find out that this is an evaluation period for next season right now or the off season anyway yeah uh chris thank you so much for coming on the show man really appreciate it thanks chase really appreciate yep. having me on hey can uh chris can you send us out so how how we do this every episode is we have a little <laughs> clip from mike breen that says uh the cleveland cavaliers are nba champions once again and we always cue him up so chris what i need you to do is with as much gusto and energy as you can say, Mike Breen, take us out and like how like a like a goober if you could. <laughs> Mike Breen, take us out. Congratulations, Cleveland. Your decades-long wait is finally over. The Cavaliers are NBA champions. 